So when we are talking about the organelles of the plant cell or the structure of the plant cell, we have to understand that there are a lot of similarities between plant cells and animal cells. So there is an overlap of organelles between plant cells and animal cells, meaning to say the nucleus, cytoplasm, smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, mitochondria, and cell surface membrane are also found in the plant cells, just like they are found in the animal cells. And if you need to do some revision on all these organelles, I suggest you check out the previous videos because they're going to be the same. But here's the thing. There are a few organelles which are absent in plant cells. So centrioles, microvilli, and cilia will not be found in plant cells. We're going to look at organelles which are unique to plant cells and not found in animal cells. And the first one, obviously, you cannot run away from it. It is the chloroplast. Billions of years ago, a larger prokaryote engulfed a smaller prokaryote and they started working together. And that's how that small green organism developed to become the present day chloroplast. So most importantly, when you're talking about the chloroplast, the chloroplast itself is a double membrane organelle. It contains its own ribosomes, which are 70S ribosomes. It also has its own DNA, and that DNA is circular and naked. And you notice that, hey, it's almost the same as the mitochondrion, isn't it? Because the mitochondrion also has a double membrane organelle. The mitochondrion also has 70S ribosomes and circular naked DNA. The only difference in chloroplasts is they actually have light harvesting photosystems that are able to assist in ATP synthesis. What this means is, it just basically tells us that the chloroplasts are able to absorb light and harness the light and use the light to synthesize ATP. That is something the mitochondrion cannot do. So the chloroplasts are fantastic that way. And we are going to look at this aspect of photosynthesis in A2. So you do not have to worry about that. For AS, all you just have to know is the chloroplasts are able to also synthesize ATP when they absorb light. Two other structures that you should be aware of in the chloroplast will be this weird cylindrical-like structure made up of a stack of membranes, and that is known as the granule and also the space within the chloroplast, which is known as the stroma. Now, do you have to memorize their functions? No, we will look at them. We will see the functions of the granule and the stroma in A2. Be mindful, this is the stroma, not the stoma. Those are two different things. And of course, when we look at the chloroplast under the microscope, look at here. You can see an image here where there's a cell with many chloroplasts. All those green color structures are the chloroplasts. Yet, are you able to see it in a very detailed way? Are you able to see the granule? No, you're not. Because if you remember, looking at this under the light microscope, you're not able to see a very detailed structure. Light micro under the light microscope, you are able to see the chloroplasts. That will happen, but it's not going to be detailed. Under the transmission electron microscope, the image on the right here, you can see an image of the chloroplast. That entire thing is actually one chloroplast. And you can see those darkened areas within the chloroplast forming a kind of line. And that structure over there is the granule. So you can get a more detailed image. I've circled it for you just for your reference. So you get a more detailed image with a transmission electron microscope and you do not get a detailed image under the light microscope. I'm not going to waste my time with the cellulose cell wall. All you just have to be aware of is that the plant cells have the structure known as the cellulose cell wall. This will be further explained in chapter 2, so I'm just going to skip it for now. The third most important structure present in plant cells is this thing known as the plasmodesma. Plasmodesma is singular, plasmodesmata is plural. Now let's talk about it. Sometimes plant cells have to communicate with each other. They may have to send signals like hormones from one cell to another cell, or they may want to transport material from one cell to another cell, water, sucrose, ions. 
So, and they may have difficulty doing that. Why do they have difficulty doing that? Because if you remember, plant cells have a cell membrane and they also have a cell wall. So the cell membrane and cell wall may impede the movement and communication between the two cells. So how can they make communication between the two cells easier? Or how can they make transport between the two cells easier? The answer to that question is the plasmodesma. So what plant cells actually do is they have the they have the normal cell wall, they have the cell wall, but as you can see here, in a certain part of the two plant cells, the cell wall is kind of broken down. And the cytoplasm between the two plant cells share a bridge, symbolized by that blue line. So, that bridge connecting the two plant cells is known as the plasmodesma. And the bridge is made up of cytoplasmic threads. This actually ensures that the cell on the left and the cell on the right are actually able to send molecules between each other if they have to. So the molecules represented by the triangle can easily now move from one cell to another cell. So the plasmodesma is just a way for two plant cells to communicate. Some students may be asking, okay, can you give me an example of that? Uh, we will not talk about the examples yet because when we are going to look at this in chapter 7, and when we are talking about that chapter, the plasmodesma will come out again. So we will cover that that time. All you just have to know about the plasmodesma right now is it's just a bridge that connects two plant cells together for easier transport and communication. And of course, last but not least is the vacuum plants. Plant cells usually have a large permanent vacuole. A vacuole is just basically a space within the cell enclosed by a membrane. Yes, the vacuole is a single membrane organelle. And that membrane is known as the tonoplast. And what actually does the vacuoles do? The vacuoles just basically uh, stores water and minerals and it controls the cell's water potential. Vacuoles have a lot of different functions, uh, different Different species of plants will have different functions for their vacuoles. Some plants store sugars inside their vacuoles. Some plants store colorful pigments in their vacuoles. It's not a fixed thing. But uh, if a question just asks you, can you give me a general function of the vacuole? You can basically say it stores water, it stores water and minerals, and also it controls the cell's water potential. Nothing much to cover over here. And remember, in animals, animal cells may also have vacuoles, but the vacuoles in animal cells are usually small and temporary, meaning to say they're not always present. And in animals, we usually refer to the vacuoles as vesicles. So that's basically it for the structures of the plant cells. There's nothing much to cover here because most of the organelles have been covered earlier. All we just have to know is the plants have the extra chloroplasts, cellulose cell wall, plasmodesma, and the large permanent vacuole.